time for a demo and some quick tips with these Holbein colored pencils. Hey everyone, it's AJ again. I'm going to be working with these Holbein pencils that I talked about previously in another video and I'm going to be giving you a demo and some tips on how to use these. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So today I'll be using a Strathmore 80 pound gray toned paper and I decided to go ahead and use this particular paper because I hadn't used it ever and um, I also wanted to bring out the highlights in this piece uh, which is a Day of the Dead piece and I sketched it out with a uh, charcoal white uh, pastel and um, I think it was by Generals. So real quick, um, YouTube user Terrence Malloy mentioned in the Best Colored Pencils Ever video that different paper yields different results with colored pencils, and I have to agree with that. So, um, you know, just to keep in mind that this is all just very subjective, um, but that is absolutely true, and I'll be doing a swatch test as well. So real quick, these particular pencils are very soft. And so, um, but they're, they're really good oil-based pencils and I really like to use them for layering and filling in color. So this is not just a, a tip for Holbein pencils. This is a tip for regular colored pencils in general that are of artist quality. Uh, I particularly like to tell people to start out with a oval circular motion so that it doesn't, uh, in the end result, it doesn't show where exactly you started and stopped. It's not going to give that that um, that scratchy look to it. The first layer with the circular motion is also known as color mapping and this is what I learned while I was in art school. But what's great with Holbein is that they have a white and then they have a soft white which is a really brighter white to, to really bring out that extra highlight. So you know if you get bored with one particular section or you feel like it's a little monotonous, change it up, work with other sections in the piece. That's what I like to tell people. And then if you want to go back to what you were originally working on, rather than getting obsessed with one particular part of your artwork, I used to do that all the time and it would, it would just absolutely drive me insane. So I kind of skip around sometimes. This also tends to lead to overworking. So I recommend skipping around. Here's another quick tip. Um, make sure that whenever you get into your second and third layers to start applying more pressure so that it'll bring out the smoothness and the richness of the color. And um, this color is called Strawberry. And I usually tend to pick out colors first as instead of just going along and deciding as I go because it saves time. So two to three colors, you know, just to get an idea of what you're going to be working with whenever you work with these pencils. That'll just personally save you some time. It's not something that you have to do. It's just something that I uh, recommend people do to get an idea of where they're going to go and what colors they're going to work with. You can always change your mind later. And so I'm adding a second layer on the eyes and I'm sorry, you can't see the tip. That's a common problem with lefties. <laughs> I'm speeding it up a little bit and adding some darker tones. And then there's a little bit more pressure there. You don't have to entirely burnish it until the very end, but applying more pressure will give it more depth. As you can see, I'm using the circular oval motions. And another quick tip, um, stay confident and don't worry about your mistakes. You know, there's always a solution to your mistakes, so don't freak out about that. Just give yourself some time and patience. And it'll also add subtle depth, if that makes sense. And then going back over it with a lighter color will really bring out that brow bone and give it that, that kick that it needs. Now I'm going to go back over it with this color called Cherry Blossom. It's kind of a, a mid-highlight. Gives it that nice subtle look even though she's wearing makeup. It's still natural. And going back over and layering once again, I believe this is my second and third layer of uh, strawberry. And these Holbein pencils are actually very comparable to Polycolor, so in the future I'm going to do a Holbein versus Polycolor or vice versa to give you guys a demonstration of this. And if you're interested, um, 
as this channel builds, I'm going to build a Patreon account possibly to give you guys a lot more comprehensive reviews and comprehensive demonstrations. And I'm using wine red, strawberry, cherry blossom, and iris for the eyes. Just giving it that nice subtle depth. Color pencil also is just, it's one of those mediums you really, really got to have patience with. It takes more time than watercolor or uh, acrylics, in my opinion, than anything else. Another quick tip, and I want to stress this, it's not necessarily, you know, set in stone, you know, it's not biblical or religious, but I like to use indigo instead of black and then kind of layer it with other dark colors and save the, the Mars black and the lamp black for the absolute darkest shadows so that you could really give those shadows and highlights that, that spectrum of color the punch that it needs. Because even, even um, you know, the, the black areas are going to have highlights like this. And I believe I used this awesome color called Lavender Blue for the highlights on the nose. Most importantly, I think, is the use of blending. Using a blender, a colorless blender like I was. And see, I'm using, I believe it was indigo here to shade this in. As I was saying about a colorless blender, um, a colorless blender pencil or the Mona Lisa paint thinner is probably my favorite among the colorless blenders to use, and I'll cover that in another video. Um, right here, I'm using the Holbein soft white instead of just the regular white because it's softer, it's really creamy, and it's very bright. Uh, I love the pigment, and you know, it, like I said, it gives that highlight that extra punch. You don't have to put it in like I am. You can wait till the end, but I just really wanted to get that in there. That helps me visualize the end result. That's just me personally. And I'm going to go in here and use my Colorless Blender again by Prismacolor. That's just my personal preference. Uh, Derwent makes a Colorless Blender as well, but I just, for some reason, the sensory thing, experience of it, I don't know why. I just don't prefer it. I'm going to add in some more makeup here, and I believe this was uh, cloud blue. I'm not sure. Let's see. What color is this? Smalt blue? <laughs> it's a nice lavender blue, kind of a nice balance in there, and I'm going to put it in with the nose to kind of give it that um, the lower highlights, medium highlights. Also, one last tip I just want to stress for beginners to keep your pencil sharpened, keep the um, tips really good and sharp, maybe every so often as you use them. I prefer a manual pencil. I don't like electric sharpeners. They eat the pencils. Um, I recommend Faber-Castell. Also, I'd like to know what your favorite pencils are. Would you please leave me a comment in the comments section? And uh, any colored pencil tips that you may have, feel free to go ahead and comment on them in the comments section. Leave them there. And I really want to build a sense of community. And like with the best colored pencils ever video, that was completely subjective. So um, those are my recommendations. Let me know what you think of these colored pencils and what your favorite colored pencils are. So as you can see, I'm using a series of pastels to use for mid-tones and to fill in uh, the rest of the makeup. I used a series of mid-tone and light pastels for uh, the shadows and um, layered them really well with the cool grays. These layer fantastically. You can get about four or five layers in. And I also saved the warm grays for the uh, secondary shadow. Quick note, if you haven't seen the Best Colored Pencils video, I know I, I sound like a broken record, uh, I wanted to note that Holbein does not sell in, in the U.S. open stock, just for those who are inside the United States. Um, you can check with their distributor on their website, and uh, you can also purchase them on eBay and on Amazon. So one last look at the eight tips that I gave you. Number one is color mapping on your first layer. Two is to work different with different sections so you don't overwork one section. Three is to apply pressure as you get to your second and third layers. Four is to pick out your colors before you start. Five is don't worry and be patient, stay confident. Six, don't use straight black until the end. Seven is to blend with a colorless blender. 
And finally, eight is to keep your pencil sharpened with a manual sharpener. And I really thank you guys for watching, liking, and commenting. We're going to look at the color swatch with different papers now. And so we'll take a look at those. Okay, the first one and the top one is the Strathmore Toned Gray 80 pounds, as I used in the demonstration. This one is the Strathmore Mixed Media 140 pounds, and it's a pretty, pretty good one. Pretty good high quality paper. Third one is the Vellum Bristol by Strathmore, which is a 100 pound paper, and I really like to use these with colored pencil a lot. And the last one is just a cheap Artist Law from Michaels. It's 98 pounds of mixed media paper. And I just went ahead and uh, blended them with the color of the Splendor again to give you an idea of what they look like blended together. And honestly, the two best ones that yielded the best results on paper were the um, Vellum uh, Bristol Strathmore 100 and the Mixed Media 140 by Strathmore. Um, the tone gray was pretty good. It was okay. Uh, the Artist Loft obviously was not good quality, so it just didn't have enough tooth to pick up that color the way that I really like it to. So you can tell that colored pencils yield different results with different paper. And I really appreciate you watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Go ahead and give me some feedback, and I will talk to you next time.